Welcome to Rams Brawl. This is Derek C. Paul with the men of the hour. Former St. Louis Rams, St. Louis Rams franchise, running back Arlen Harris and Tommy Pauly for episode 10. And we're back with a little bit of sports talk, a little bit wide ranging going across the board. First things first, though, Tommy, how you doing? I'm doing all right, man. How you doing, Derek? It's a um, wonderful day full of joy and cheer. <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, I'm doing that. We got back to football. Uh, I actually am on the field doing some uh, some drills and, and stuff like that. So now I'm actually getting to see the players. I'm a coach uh, you know, and more hands-on approach. So um, so that's been great. So um, the football is getting back to to a reality. So I'm getting excited. I know all in this. Well, what's your first glimpse? Like, what are your – the players you got, are you are you thinking? I know you, you want to be careful what you say. You don't want to be too too hype or too. Uh, give it up. Out. Give it up. Give up the juice. What you got? Yeah, we got athletes last year. They went far in the playoffs, so we expect them big things to come back this year. We expect to win it all. I mean, I mean that's always the goal. I don't think nobody going to the season and I and expect you know not to win it all. I mean, at least not me. I, I mean, I expect whoever I coach. We try and win every game, so we got that. But fortune this year is it's a reality that we probably can. We got great athletes. Uh, we got a good coach, and Coach Turner um, does a great job running the offense. and been a head coach of the team. We got great players. Um, so um, I'm looking forward to it. Arlo, what about you, man? I'm guessing you're back at the game, too? Yes, sir. You know, um, still just keeping the social distancing with uh, – bringing the kids in um, as far as getting online meetings, um, you know, peeking at some of them that I know they're doing different workouts and running around. And, uh, you know, you can just tell people are getting a little bit more comfortable being around each other, the masks are going away, <laughs> you know what I mean? And um, people starting to try to put, put hands on each other, just that competitive nature is starting to come out a little bit. Um, so I'm excited. You know, for a couple more weeks, we get together, get together at Lutheran St. Charles, be able to get the team together, and um, you know, just watching, looking for football on ESPN, trying to keep up with all the the, the hottest news, and even still at the same time, you know, you know, keeping eyes on this virus. You know, some some states are going up. Over and all, Missouri is uh, been staying steady. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, I, I think we're going in the right direction. All right, so all that said, going right, stay with and stay right with you, Arlen, for your statement of the week. If, you, if there's one thing you want to kick off today with, what is it? Run that one back. Say that one more time. If there's sorry. one <laughs> statement, if there's one thing you want to jump off with today, what's that statement? What is your statement of the week? Ooh, statement of the week. Oh, man, that's good, but... Uh... Statement, statement, you know, throw me out. You all right, check it out. So I literally just tweeted this and I haven't put nothing on social media since the last time we even talked. And um I was listening to my boy Beanie Siegel and and I tweeted out that your that that your handshake ain't matching your smile. So what what does that mean? You can dig deep into that a little bit a little bit more, man. So just be honest, you know, be up be up front, you know, say what you mean to say, and um your actions should, should always uh you know, they say pictures are worth a thousand words, so I, I, I'm, I'm going to stick with that. Tommy, your statement of the week. Uh, no, I don't really have a statement of the week. No, I, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't really have a statement. I mean, I think what's, what's happening or what's going on, you know, that's, I guess my statement of the week is change. Um, change is coming, so. Uh, it's going to be hard pulling that root up, but hopefully um, things will happen for the better. If not, then shit. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> All right, so let's jump in. We got a lot to cover. Yeah, For what is supposed to be, should be a relatively short show today, we're not going to sit here and blabber you guys the ears off to death, but right away, entering June now with things starting to settle, Tommy, how do you view the Rams now? Now you've had time to really kind of let the draft on your mind, let the changes, you know, talk really being gone. We know he passes physical with the, with the Falcons reportedly. Have you changed your mind at all about this team since the draft? How do you view, view the Rams as they're built right now? 
I don't think they're uh, maybe a playoff team, borderline playoff team. I think nine and seven. I think that'll be a, a solid season for them. Um, anything that if they went ten or more, I think that's a great season. Uh, that means they'll probably be winning the. Um, their division, their division is tough. You know, you got San Fran, you got Seattle, they got to play. Arizona going to be tougher than it was last year. So nine and seven, I might get you in the playoffs. So I'm still stand on nine and seven. I think they, I'm gonna go with. I'm gonna think they make the playoffs. I think they got a good enough talent. They got a top one of the top corners in the uh, in, in the league. They got one of the top, but well, the top defensive player in the league, Curry, uh, with Aaron Donald. And uh, Jalen Ramsey at, at the corner. So hey, I think you got enough. You just told me that PFF had Jared Goff as a top rated quarterback since 2010. <laughs> oh, well, the, the top so, Rams player, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the top Rams player. So they got a quarterback. So I, to me, I think they 9 and 7, they, they should be right in the hunt, uh, making a playoff. What about you, Arlen? <laughs> Man, I agree. They definitely got some great pieces. I'm a, I'm gonna stick with my A and eight uh, and play it safe. Um, I think those first three games, really those really four weeks, I think we'll really be able to um, tell what direction that they're going. I'm still gonna lean on. You know, I know everyone's in the same situation, but with you know new coordinator and and you know a lot of main pieces that's coming in, I think they're gonna have to get acclimated a little bit. And um, you know, I, I, I'm just gonna. I'm just going to stick with that. I mean, I think they can go different directions. I don't think they're going to be terrible. I think they're going to have a successful season. Um, and we'll and we'll see. You know, I'm, I'm rooting for some of those young guys to come in and compete, you know, claim a spot. Um, but, you know, with with those guys most likely starting at training camp, you know, that things are going to be moving real fast, man, real, real fast. But um, I agree. I think the last time we talked, Tommy said he feel confidence with the defense. A lot of those main pieces are there. You know, you got good leadership on that side of the ball. So, you know, hopefully it's not many distractions. Those guys can, can can get off to a great start. All right. So a couple of things going on here. We mentioned, just a second ago, Tommy mentioned the, the PFF rating. Jared Goff, the top player on the Rams roster by measuring wins against replacement. It's called war. It's something we, it's that we usually see. In relation to baseball, they're measuring it with the overall compared to what your position would be on average. So average quarterback versus how he performed. Do you guys agree with the idea that Jared Goff, since 2010, would be the best player on the Rams roster? And just a real, real quick note on that. Number one for when the placement is him. Number two, Sam Bradford. Number three is Aaron Donald. Number four is Robert Woods. And number five is Tremaine Johnson. So there's the top five. It measures basically how much better a player is than any would-be replacement. So what do you think, Arlen? Interesting. Um, I mean, obviously, I think Aaron Donald is a... The, the face of the team for me, um, I never really understand all the, you know, like you said, those PFF, WA, I, I don't, I don't really get caught up in that stuff. Um, but, uh, who, who is that? Do you know who, who is that exactly? Like who does those rankings? Like who's really behind that? Well, pro football focuses. They have that metric. Just them specifically. Okay. That's yeah, one of the ones they I'm manage. So. Okay. Go ahead, Tommy. Man, I, I'm. I mean, I don't. I don't see how golf could be. I get it. You know what? Coming off these past couple of years, I, I can see that. Again, the quarterbacks are always probably going to get that that advantage. Um, but I don't see Aaron. Don, I, you know, next will be Aaron Donald for me. I mean, it could be an indictment of how bad the quarterback play has been for the Rams before him. That he would be number one. That's fair. That's fair. I mean, <laughs> it hasn't been good. And part of it was Bradford getting hurt. We'll never know how good he could have been because he was hurt all the time. What do you think, Tommy? You, you can't take the head coach piece out of that. You understand? Like, the, uh, Sean McVay does a great job. 
of calling plays, a schematic. I mean, I think if he had me a quarterback, I could play some passes out back there. So you can't never take that out of the equation with what he does for Jared Goff. I mean, I seen him going up to the line in his ear. Hey, cover two. Make sure you hit hit, hit this guy right here. Um, so he helps him out in all facets. And he, like I said, his offensive scheme is one of the best in the, in the league right now. So he's an offensive genius. Um, so the court and, and as far as the PFF thing, uh, it's, it's a little skewed towards the quarterback. Anytime you got anything with Aaron Donald third with the Rams behind Sam Bradford, I mean, you got to kind of discard that, that whole war situation. I mean, that, that's that, or them, the metrics probably don't need to be used in, the, um, football, you know, football is more of a team sport. Um, you know, every man got has to do his job, but more of a team team sport. They, you know, and and then, but I I can see how it's skewed because you might have the backup quarterback who comes in for Jared Goff, Goff right? Or he he's getting all the wins, and the backup if they do have a backup come in, more than likely is going to lose. So yeah, it looks like he's the more valuable player because he gets all the reps in two days. He's going to get all the reps throughout the week, majority of the time. And if a backup happens to comes in the game, then he might get he might do a little something, but it's not going to be up to that magnitude. Where Aaron Donald, we can sell up him in, and the and the team possibly could actually actually get a win if the quarterback plays well. So I can see it both ways, but still, Aaron Donald third, ah, uh, that's a stretch. I think it's easier to make the case if, well, if Jared Goff had a better year this last year, he had two really great numerical years in 2017. And 2018, 2019 fell off the map a little bit due to a lot of reasons, some of it not, not his own fault. So I would think that's why we would be all a little more concerned. If he's, if he's throwing 45 touchdowns and center interceptions a year, 4,500 yards passing, and his team's getting in the playoffs deep, it's pretty easy to say, yeah, he's, he's, but he's got the numbers there. Otherwise, yeah, I, Aaron Donald probably, I can't, he's been so dominant. How can you not say that? But I got a counter for you guys. I just found it. So I'm throwing an audible here on the show. And I just found it. Ranking the Rams offensive lines. There's NFL media's Gil Brandt. Okay. Quote from Twitter. At Gil Brandt. This is NFL media. Was thinking about the six best offensive lines in the NFL. These are the six I came up with. How would you rank them? And who am I missing? Here he goes. 49ers, Colts, Cowboys, Raiders, Rams, and the Saints. That's his top six. Immediate reply comes over from Greg Rosenthal from NFL.com. He says, putting the Rams, putting the Rams on him invalidates the rest of the list, and Gil Brandt replies, too much PFF group think. Now I know why Andrew Whitworth left Twitter. So, you guys are both concerned when the draft about the Rams not taking an offensive lineman until late. Yeah, here's at least somebody who covers covers the team who thinks this is going to be a good offensive line next year. What do you think? <clears throat> I, I, where does that come from? You know what I mean? Like you said, this past year, they haven't been able to really been a consistent unit, all five, right? Yeah, there's been injuries. There's been guys moving around. So I don't understand where that comes from. And then you're going to put them in there over a Titans over. I mean, you're throwing them in the, t- that's in the top. That doesn't make sense. And girl, they were what, uh, they're in the back end of rushing. They were one of the worst teams in the NFL. They're in the top five uh, passing, and then they're in the bottom five rushing. So how is that even validated if you're going to base it off of numbers and the success? And yeah, you know, girlies are hurt, but just in general, they they didn't have they did not run the ball well, and they did not finish well. So uh, that's confusing. But they did scale. Throughout the year, as they played together, they they did get better. 
but they, yeah, they but to be, great. You can get better, right? That's what I'm saying. To get you can get better, but to be considered one of the top, that that doesn't. I mean, right away, how how are the Titans not mentioned? Yeah, uh, I mean, you have. Like, that doesn't even make, that don't make yeah. sense. Like, you got a guy just ran for two. If that doesn't make sense to me, so I don't know. Tom, what about you? Um, I mean, yeah, I mean, a lot, it, it, it could be, you know, it's probably wrong, but I'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt. They had a lot of guys hurt last year. Um. Obviously, they seen something with those guys in practice at some point that they decided not to take one. So I'm, I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. I know it's hard sometimes, but I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt because they, they they did put all that money into a quarterback. So you, you would like to think they're at least trying to protect them, at least, right? So, uh, you know, I think they're going to overachieve this year. They're going to have some guys coming back from injury. Uh, I'm going to say they vastly improve if they can stay injury-free. Now, that's the biggest key. Can they stay injury-free? I don't know. You got a 30, a 50-year-old left tackle. Uh, <laughs> and, some, <laughs> and some other guys, you know, in there that, you know, have been injury-prone so from, uh, from the last few years. So that's the part right there, keeping those guys healthy and, and uh Consistent, cohesive unit. I think uh, they'll they'll be fine. I mean, like I said, Sean McVay does a great job of max protecting and and having those two tight ends out there helping them out with the uh, with blocking and stuff like that. So I think in those situations with the two tight ends that they do have, I think they'll do a, a pretty decent job. All right. So all that. We'll call it that a little bit of small talk here, but let's play a little game of true and false, okay? Play a little game of true and false between you two. See if you guys say the statement is true or if it's false and give me an explanation why. I'm going to start first with the statement made by Skip Bayless in response to the to Pro Football Focus, our theme today, naming Aaron Donald as the number one player in the league heading into 2020. Here's what he said. This is after, by the way, saying he would laugh, the Buccaneers would laugh at a potential trade, a hypothetical trade of Donald and Goff for Brady. Okay. Declares that Donald is not that viable, quoting Cameron Silva. And, quote, they don't need Aaron Donald because he's not that viable. He does not play quarterback. Okay. Tommy. Do you agree with that statement, true or false? No, oh, that's false. Um, Aaron Donald does a great job in the community. Um, he sells jerseys. I mean, we ain't even talking about his pay because whoever's saying bad, something bad about his pay, you don't need to be listening to them anyway. I mean, the man is great on the field, but all the stuff that he generates for the uh, Los Angeles community, uh, money and time that he spends, I mean, he's invaluable. I mean, he's just an icon. He's going to go down in the Hall of Fame. You can't get a rip to throw away players like that for has been. So I think it's a disrespectful statement um, towards Aaron Donald, and he, he has the right to respond to it. I think when we listen to Skip Bayless, Skip Bayless, um, he's the guy that said Tim Tebow was, should be in the league. He's a starter. Um, he's the guy that – Used to get on Barry Bonds before he went to San Francisco. And then when he went there, he rolled him. He rides LeBron James consistently. He's just one of those people that whoever's that guy, he rides him. So why? Why does he do that? So I can get notoriety for riding this, this guy right here. It's like clickbait. So eh, I don't believe it's Skip Bayless. He just says that for his show and ratings. Now what everybody's doing around, going around, he had Aaron Donald replied to him. Yeah, he's got everybody talking about his asinine statement. Hey, who wins in the end? Skip Bayless. He's been doing his whole career. That's how he became who he is and on TV by shooting at the great players, Hall of Fame type players, and being the only one to object. And that's how he made his living. And that's just part of it. So I don't believe nothing Skip Bayless say. I mean, you take that with a grain of salt. He's a showman. Arlen, true or false? Yeah, definitely a uh, uh, shock and all. He, he's doing it for 
a response clearly um skip don't believe that you know what i mean you i, I, I love what tommy said this dude's in, invaluable you know what he's been able to do on that team and just throughout his career keeping his nose clean he's a team player he's a leader and then again like we talked about before when we talk about the running back position and linebacker position here we go again someone putting their influence on well he's not a quarterback right we consistently push these this quarterback position at the forefront and at the platform not saying it's not rightfully so, but on this team, the quarterback ain't the guy. It's number 99. Like, he, he, they go as he go. You know what I mean? So um, you can say, okay, the quarterback, he's the money guy, but that's why the defensive linemen are, are so important. And guess what? Last time I checked, Aaron Donald does his job and he gets to the quarterback. So, you know, what, what, are, we, what are we really saying here? You know what I mean? It's either he's throwing the ball or, or and Aaron Donald's getting to the guy that is throwing the ball. So I think he's he's doing his job, and um, by no means um, he's he's like overrated or shouldn't be talked about in that way. All right, so I'm going to stay with you as we go to the next question here. Colleges are opening up. Yeah, starting to get some some good news here. Colleges opening up. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so true or false? We will have a college football season in 2020. True or false? True. Everywhere but California. Not joking. <laughs> nah, Cal- Cali making it hard, man. Cali trying to mess up the football season for everybody. But I'm, I'm going to stay optimistic. I think, um, you know, there's been a couple cases. You know, kids are starting to come back on campus. Some of the, uh, excuse me, some of the bigger programs where, you know, people are coming back with the virus and, you know, hopefully they get taken care of and, and um, be able to um, quarantine them and, and, and not make it, a, you know, spread. But like you said, yeah, they're definitely opening up. It's it's almost involuntary. I know some of the colleges I've talked to, they can't they can't meet. You know what I mean? It's more so they can't make it mandatory. They they say oh involuntary, but guys are showing up, you know, working out, and then um, hopefully as things get clear, they can get them in a classroom and move around. You know what I mean? As a as a team, so I'm excited, man. I'm a college football guy. I love. I don't care if it's NAIA or D8. I'm, I'm watching college football. Like I. I love I love the energy of, of seeing those guys run around. So hopefully everybody's staying healthy, you know, with these protests and everything going on. Lord have mercy that, you know, these guys ain't showing back up on campus and uh making it um a lot harder for for our sport to, to be played this fall. Tommy, college football this year. Will there be a season, true or false? Uh, true. I think it's a season. I think it's a season. There's too much money out on the table. Do I think it's a, it's going to be a scaled down season? So you might don't play all ten games. Um, I think some programs won't even play a game. Like some 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 programs won't have the the resources to to be able to test players consistently. Um, you got to think about that too. So I think some some people won't even play a season. So I think it'll be the big boys that play. The power five boys definitely going to play because it's. When they came out with the numbers about a week ago about how many billions they stand to lose, I mean, the NCAA and, and the schools, I mean, they <laughs> they got to play. I mean, what are we talking about here? So I think they play pop, the big the big boys, I think, some five and maybe some other smaller schools won't get the opportunity this year. I think they just sit it out and wait the next year when everything clear up. I got to be honest. I was really caught off guard when Michigan said, we might not play football this year. Like you, this is like five months before a season was starting. You're saying, well, we might not play football this year. That, that's just, when that's did they just, say that? About a month ago. Oh yeah. And I think that whole month ago, once them numbers came out, I must, everybody stand to lose and all that. Oh, 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 everybody started rethinking. And I think what you see now, everybody getting back to it. Well, oh, you see Michigan is bad though. You see their numbers. They're still climbing. They're numbers. Man, everybody's climbing. Viruses. Florida is climbing. Florida, they they, yeah. they done open everything back up. High school, everything. Little league, everybody. Well, we knew that once we started opening back up, we knew numbers would go up. That was just that was the whole point. You flatten the curve was to flatten that for hospitals. We always knew that we we're going to see more cases. Now, the question is how many cases will we see in the summer? And will it lead to a potential lockdown again, or will be that there will there be other options? 
Speaking of the virus itself, let's talk about potential lockdown. The World Health Organization yesterday, before walking back a little bit today, actually said that asynchronous patients, people with COVID, or asynchronous, very rarely transmit the disease. This is new. They walked it back some today, which was kind of weird. They walked it back one day <laughs> later. But the overall infection rate, for what we're seeing the numbers show, just in general, the infection rate is showing to be lower than imagined. The death rate is showing to be lower than we thought would be. Um, with that in mind, true or false, guys, do you see, and I'll stick with Tommy here for a second. Tommy, will we see it in a quarantine this year? True or false? Man, no. When the money, when they shut down them stock markets, and them people seeing their uh, stocks and 401ks and all the securities, no. If I, I told my wife, man, they're going to put in an implement, whoever died, die. That's how it's going. I mean, whoever, you know, hopefully the, the hospital is going to get overrun. But that's what I see. I mean, I heard the guy from Texas, a representative, say, hey, if the older folk get it and they got to sacrifice themselves, oh, I mean, He's seen his money. <laughs> if if people are still dying, like there's been a hundred thousand people died in three months, right? Three months, numbers still going up, right? And we open up beaches, everything's still open. So that's telling me people don't care. Like they like the, even the people that's marching. Um, some they, you, you ask them, you worry about coronavirus? They like, no, I ain't worried about it. if I die, I die. But I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna fight for this cause right here. So that's how serious it is. I mean, people are not even studying COVID no more. They, if, if they get sick, they're going to try to get well. If they're not, hey, they live. That's why it's to see American society right now. Do I see some people worried about it? Yes. But the majority, no, nah, they out here. They out here. I seen this strip club open out, and they stripping outside. <laughs> so, <laughs> under the tent. Man. Hey, All right. This, <laughs> My goodness. Arlen, let me clarify the question because I didn't actually give it true or false. Arlen, true or false? We will uh, take that not <laughs> have a quarantine the rest of the year. I'm going to say true. I'm going to say true. We won't. Uh, that's just purely being optimistic, man. Uh, I don't. Golly. Uh, but I think, it's, I think it's a possibility. We can't be ignorant to the fact. I, I get it. I think if we were to quarantine or I'll put it this way, because when you say quarantine, there's two different ways, right? If they, they kind of draw it back, close some places down, say social distancing, the stay at home order, that's done. <laughs> I think people will literally be on top of their roofs, jumping off backwards if they put another stay at home order just off the fact, like Tommy said, the money, you know what I mean? Being, um, you know, going out, you know, the sun's out. People people feel good, man. You know, they want to go out there, socialize, and, um, you know, but you're always going to have someone that's going to try to buck against the system. But I'm going to go with, man, I'm being optimistic. I think we're going to just ride this wave out, uh, you know. I think it might be some spikes. It might be some some casualties. I hate to say it like that. But as far as going full quarantine, I think that's going to be rough. I don't, I don't know who's going to. Even if they try to go do that, they're gonna have to bring in the national guard and and, and be. You can't ain't that many people in the world in the man them streets and make sure people stay in that house. So, um, yeah, in a roundabout way, I'm 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 gonna say no. I'm rooting for uh, you know, I know they're they're talking about like you said they're asymptomatic and they're they're trying to find new. Uh, I wouldn't use the word vaccine, but uh, uh, medicine, and they're trying to do different things that uh. They're testing. They feel like they should, they're they're gonna have some things to be able to uh, control it, you know. So we'll see. We'll find out. Right. We'll find out. Okay. True or false? Players should not forgive Vic Fangio for his comments that were made to made in private about racism. And here's the quote. He stated, this is what got out. I think our problems in the NFL along those lines are minimal. 
We're in a league of meritocracy. You earn what you get. You get what you earn. I don't see racism at all in the NFL. I don't see discrimination in the NFL. We all live together, joined as one, for one common goal, and we all intermingle and mix tremendously. That was a comment that upset many people. True or false, Arlen, does he deserve... Will he be, will he be forgiven? Not does he deserve... Will he be forgiven? Yeah, he'll be forgiven by some. I'll say true. Again, I, I don't really have nothing to say about that. You say what you say. I, I, you know what I mean? Like, that's how you feel, man. Power to you. I, you know, I, I, I can't can't fault that man if that's what he really feels. You can say you got, you're walking around with blindfolds on, but you know what I mean? I, I think, you know, right now we're about to hit this little, um, this groove of, like you said, people are, you better watch your text messages, man. We, we better, you better make sure that mic turned off, Derek, when we off this air. You know what I mean? It's like now people are going to be tiptoeing and walking on eggshells because it's now, I think it's going to be popular to have that I got you moment now. You know what I mean? So things that are said in private or someone that says, hey, you asked me a question, everyone's going to be gun shy. You know what I mean? So some of these reporters, whatever, they're going to have to, they're going to be pulling teeth this fall because people are going to be afraid to voice their opinions because they're going to be so worried about the blowback, which to me is, I thought that's the whole point. You're not going to agree, say your views, but you know, again, that's just where we're at right now. You know, whether you agree or not, that's that man's, that's his statement, his words, his opinions, his views. But I, I do think, um, I forget how you, how, how, which way the true and false was, but um, I'm going to say, yeah, it's true. I, I think people will definitely, forget. don't forget about this. Yeah. <laughs> Tommy, true or false? I say, I think false. I don't think they forget. Um, he had a contract, so he should, and he should be good. But I don't know. You know, the Denver Broncos, right? So it goes right. Close the Broncos. Yeah, close to the Broncos. And 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 they, that players went out and protested big time yesterday. And that leader, who was Von Miller, right? Mm-hmm. And he was he was at the forefront of the of the, of the rallies yesterday. So, I mean, you got to get him on board. I don't know if he's not on board. Or Von Miller's not on board the situation. I don't see how you can keep the coach. I mean, because that's what they sell you in the league. You know, <laughs> it was funny when I heard him say that's what they sell you in the league, though. This is my time to see anybody come here, but why they got the Rooney Rule? <laughs> It's funny, right? Yeah, and the ring rule, and, <laughs> and yet we don't have, we don't have many African American head coaches in the league. We don't have many African American GMs in the league. Steve Wilkes was fired after one year in Arizona. Some would say he did a horrible job. Some would say that he deserved he deserved more time. Look at, uh, I had a conversation with my co-host for Talk Radio today, Mike Stewart. And he brought up, he brought up in conversation uh, Hugh Jackson with the Browns, and I said, "Dude, he did a horrible job there." He goes, and he said there was a whole bunch of backbiting in there, et cetera, et cetera. So he deserved more than he got. I, I, all I can say Hugh is, to get you out of there. I thought I thought he. I mean, I'm in, I'm in Northeast Ohio. I thought he did a horrible job. I thought, I thought he managed everything yeah. so poorly. But I can also see how you would be undermined as well. But you hire your coaching staff, dude. So I don't know. I'm not taking a job. You understand? If I can't hire my coaches, I can't bring my people in. What? Just to say, say I have a job? I'm not taking that job. Right? They set me up for failure. I was. He tap danced this whole time, man. My he's there and trying to play both sides of the fence. I ain't trying to bring cabinet and all that now. And save, save it to you. Um, but. It was, like I said, it was, I mean, when I said my talk was in the league, I remember those I remember those conversations like when two could be talking out in front of everybody. So, man, yeah, this is my talk was in. He's looking like you know, funny as hell. It was just it was, you can go back to as a player, I barely sit in meetings and hear different coaches say that. Yeah. You look around, 
Like, you no know, head coach, ain't no GMs and stuff like that. Like you said. So, you know, just one of them things. That I think he he has to get Von Miller on board. So if you don't get Von Miller on board somehow, I don't know how you keep him. I mean, I don't know. You tell me. You think you, you got to get the best coach. You got to get the best player on board, right? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I got to think you, think know, you would, though. <clears throat> I think Vic Fan just been around the league so long now that – and he's pretty, I mean, he's pretty well respected. I got to think that he would, wouldn't he? I mean, you think, I mean, it's not like it's somebody who has a horrible track record for racism elsewhere and so on and so forth. It could be I don't that think he's six a, naive as all get out. Yeah, that's it. I ain't saying he was racist. I ain't never said that. No, I, I wasn't he, saying you were saying that at all. I wasn't. Yeah. But I just I'm couldn't just, think of a, of a reason unless Vaughn took him as being a racist that he would say no. And I don't think anybody in the league sees him that way. No, I just think you're looking at it being not being sensitive to Vaughn's uh, peoples, like to people he deemed are getting uh, discriminated against. So he think if it's not a lot of black coaches, if it's just, if, if in football system where there's no GM, no black coaches, I mean, you could take it that way. Do I think he's a racist? No, but is he like Drew Brees insensitive? Yes. They don't think of outside of their privilege. They just think, oh, my privilege, this is it. When somebody else's View might be vastly that their view and experience might be vastly different. So that that's all we saying. Even with the movement, I think it's 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 saying people need to just pause, take maybe take a look at some the other side or somebody else's uh, lens real quick, sit in their seat and see how it is, really is for them, and just listen. And, and I think you, that's when people do better. But when you just brush it all, it don't happen. I don't see it. It can't be true. He's, I don't want benefit of the doubt goes to the police. I think that's where all the, uh, you know, the, the, the mis represent the mischaracterization stuff happens. That's why I think confusion stuff seeps in um, because people are not listening to people. They just stuck in their privilege. All right. So our last one today, and it kind of works off this, you know, this was a private conversation that was exposed. And uh, how do you guys feel about private conversations between people being exposed for cases like this? And this is not true or false. It's just how do you feel about it when it comes down to people's careers or livelihoods and private conversation like this? You could say the same for so, something that somebody tweeted 10 years ago all of a sudden comes back up, gets pulled up, and now it, they're getting – they're losing their job over it and everything. Is that okay? How do you guys feel about it? I'll go, go, Tommy, go. I know you're ready. You're... Oh, good. <laughs> no, Tommy was telling me, he's like, this. he's on his, he's ready to go. Right. I, I had this conversation the other day, you know, for real. You know, we had this discussion, right? And I would say I would never pitch something in, and me and my text, we in a group text, we talk about all type of stuff. I would never put anything in a text I ain't willing to stand on. I ain't doing that. Even when me and my friends just both, so that I might say I'm better than Ray Lewis. I ain't going to say that in the text. Now, when we get around each other, I might be like, well, I'm better than Ray Lord. I don't care what you say. You understand? So whatever I put in the text is, I'm going to stand on that. I'm not just going to pitch something out there. I don't know what somebody else's intention is. Or somebody might have, he might that person might have lost their phone and somebody else get the phone and I done put in there, oh, I hate that. Hey, you understand? So I, I don't, I don't, I, I don't do that. So whatever I put on something, either in social media, text, I believe you should stand on it. That that's your truth. Um, it shouldn't be. I don't believe in that. I mean, then go back when the backlash hit. Whatever I put out there, I'm gonna stand on it. And whatever let the chips fall where they made. That's just how I always been. I ain't gonna go back and moonwalk it. Arlen, what do you think? I think there's so many deciding factors, man. Like you look at Dabo, you look at Drew Brees. Like you you put emphasis because how old they are, how long they've been around the game. Like okay, you. You know better what you're saying. Again, I say not wrong, but maybe the sensitivity or how it's being presented. But then the one, that, the cat that turned my stomach was Jake from, because I'm a Swift cat. He a Philly boy. So I followed Georgia. The, and that was a 2019. So to me, I'm like, nah, that, that to me, his was the worst that I've heard as of late. Not mm -hmm. just what he said, but his recent. In the context, whatever, we're not going to that. But 
I agree with you, Derek. I mean, some of these guys, man, from you talking about 2013, 2012, come on, man. People evolve. People change. I do agree with Tom. You know, if it's text or whatever, you would think, you know, I'm going to, you know, put whatever you put out there, stand on it. You don't know. However, again, when I say some of what was the, the, the quarterback from the Bills, when someone came back, went back to like the 80s on them, and the poor kid got trampled off of it. It, it's it's like yeah, he was like thirteen on, years old. Yeah, like come on, man. Or or you listen to a rap song and you, you repeat something that you feel comfortable. You're in your little area and you're in your environment and that's your safe place. And now someone's like, "Got you." Why are you repeating those those lyrics? I I think it's a. I th- I think that's that things get sticky. I don't agree on it. I'm pretty sure. You know, I'm not on no level, man. I, I, again, I always believe. You dig deep enough on anybody or you look hard enough, you're going to find something wrong. That's just, we're flawed. We're sitting, like, yeah, you're going to dig. Yeah. yeah, like, you're going to find something. But, I, you know, I just feel bad that I think this might become a thing, at least for right now, until sports, because we're looking for something. But some of these dudes, man, I, I, think, we're, I think it's not done. We're going to, I think some bombs are going to be dropped here soon on some big programs on some big name people that, you know what I mean? They might have a little something, something on the side and they like, oh, for real, that's what we're doing? Bang. Um, and then you, you, you can't yeah. take it back, you know? You know hey, Arlen, um, you, you got kids? Absolutely. You 13-year-old going to piss something out there that he hates certain type of people? He better not. Why? Wow, yeah, I mean, you, don't, you ain't feed that to him, right? I got right. kids. Right? I only can speak for I me mean, and none of my view. My kids would never do nothing like that. Actually, when we, my son, he stayed over his buddy house when the George Floyd stuff. And I know my son, like he's, he, 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 he's, when he sees something, he just, he, he'll cry to drop me with Dom. He, he's just a passionate kid. Like, he's just sensitive, like, on that level. Like, so he said when he watched, he started crying instantly. And he mm-hmm. was choked up. Just listening to some of the stories. Like he just can't believe people will do that. Like he just can't not believe. Why? Because I don't teach him. I teach him treat every man fair on the person on, on his face. How I be treat you. I don't tell him, oh, this person or oh, this person or oh, this person is bad. This person is bad. So he had no affirmation to go out there at 13 year old and piss up on Twitter or Facebook or whatever it is, talking about what he hate or hate these type of people. Where is he getting it from? That's a learned behavior. But it's not but just it, it's it, not it, just hating people though, guys. It's in some cases it's just some kid making a dumb comment that was never meant to be hateful at all, but it reads that way eight years later. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean and, and two, I'm at least for me, I always err to the side of Listen, I know how I, I raise my kids, but once they go out that door, right? You know, you, you know what I mean. Influences, folk. You know, they play sports. They in the classroom. You know, we all grew up. There's peer pressure. I would love to say, hey, my not my kids. I, I I don't. I'm not that guy. My daughter's first year in college. You know what I mean? People make comments like, "Come on, uh, she's she's a freshman in college. Like, you really think she's not doing X?" And in my head, I'm like, she better not be. But I can't sit there and if something come out, well, you know, Kylie just did so and so. You know what I mean? I, shoot, I, you know, I, 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 I understand what you're saying, but again, at that age, that's why I went off of the age thing, off of those examples. Thirteen, four, you know, those kids, they, they they're going to slip up, man. They still learning, developing. We want to sit here and maybe say, nah, not all, not mine. Because right now, I know my kids. Someone say, hey, man. Like you said, my two sons is totally different. My youngest, he built little. He got more streets. So he going to pop off. My other one, man, he just, he want to do him, stay in his lane. He ain't trying to, he mind his business. And then someone said, well, you know, AJ just, you know, we, he's in the back of school with so-and-so. I'm like, what? Man, get out of here. Not my son. But I don't know, man. I, I think social media, I'll put, okay. Social media right now for all three of us. Yes, we're a part of it. We get it. But you, but our kids, like, that's their reality. So them going back and forth, texting, electronic, DMs, for us, we look at it like, I would never do that. For them, that's like their communication. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I, I think 
they operate a little bit different. But yeah, man, I'm I'm with. I I, I wish I wish I could get all social media off of my kids for real. But I don't. I don't. You could, hey, man, I tell you, 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 you parent your kid, right? I think things that good things that happen. I swear. I, I mean, I got kids, man. I got three of them. And I got two stepkids. And ain't none of them post nothing crazy in their whole life about something. Wow. Well, I mean, Tommy, facts. in some cases, they might not paint, they might not post something crazy, but they could be because it's text messaging. Someone could read that and read it totally the way it was never meant to be. That's the danger in social media is that, you know, you are not a man to man. You I mean, oh, we could we could have a conversation like we've had many a conversation. We can we can go out there and talk things through and, you know, the heart of a person in a text message. You can't always see that. And that's the danger, though, with a text based social media system where. <laughs> man, your son could say something completely innocent and it come out completely wrong and their life could be almost wrecked for it. That's where we are now. Um, I mean, that's your opinion. I don't. I just feel as though that people put they saying it. I it, 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 some stuff you can't say out of context. I mean, I just on well, some 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 topics you might not need even across because it might even be take. Sometimes I sit here for like five minutes before I write a text. You know what? I'm gonna say it just in case. It, I wanted to come out exactly how I wanted to say if I was talking to you. I ain't gonna put it out in a certain way. And maybe you say a 13-year-old might not do it, but it, they shouldn't even be thinking nothing vulgar or wild anyway at that age, unless they're around it. Uh, that's just my opinion. I'm just, I got kids that, that, that was 13, that are in college now, and I got another daughter, she's 13, she don't text nobody crazy and talk, because I, I see the text. So I, I don't know. It's just my opinion. I don't know. All right, guys. Um, so uh, we'll leave it there. We'll and. <laughs> We'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll come back to some of those parenting things. We're I'm all sure parenting. we will. So I'm sure. here we go, guys. Social media. Find us at Ransbro on Twitter. Find Tommy. Where, Tommy? At tpoly29. You can find Arlen where? I just shove all my stuff down. I have my <laughs> whole social media. Now, now, now Arlen Harris, 33, and train, run it. Run it! <laughs> I got you, my man. Shut up. You can find me at DC Paul. You can also find me also with Rams Talk Radio. We've been around for a long time. And with all that said, we're out of here. We'll see you next week with more shenanigans. We're out. Yes, sir.